bad news for Ryansgate to continue. So Ryansgate, of course, they are strugg they're struggling to have get like the they don't have any really many. Actually, they have two major franchises. John Wick was they just ended that series, obviously. They're gonna try to continue with spin spinoffs to milk John Wick dry because of course and of course they have the Saw franchise and of course they have the Hunger Games movies. But Ryan's Gate never really gets any major franchises. But they had the opportunity to make a very successful movie. Because Borderlands is a very successful and popular video game series. But Ryan's Gate screwed it up again by making it live action. No one asked for a live action Borderlands movie. Okay? No one asked for it. Okay? If people want to have a Borderlands movie, it sort of made it look like the video games. But Hollywood is too afraid of making an R-rated animated movie. So that's where we are now. Okay, but it seems that this movie has been a disaster for Lionsgate. It was originally reported. The film cost $120 million, including extensive resuits. Meanwhile, the movie is only opening to 10 to 50 million. This is not very good numbers for the Borderlands movie. Okay, and I won't be surprised that the critic scores are very low for this movie too, because it's just the movie looks really bad. Okay, and you can of course blame COVID for this movie and stuff. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And. And everybody's just making fun of this movie. Everybody's just making fun of these movies. And of course, the first reacts to this movie are bad. Who would have guessed at this point that no one likes this movie? You know, like, Lionsgate had a golden opportunity to make a Borderlands movie that respected the source material. But again, Lionsgate should be the last company to go to to adapt a movie, okay? They're also screwing up the Naruto live-action movie where it's, you know, because they know nothing about the source material. It's like Lionsgate is like the last company you'll go to. Because it seems that Lionsgate, their sole motive is, we need a master franchise to replace John Wick. And Hunger Games, but we don't know how to do do it. Okay, we don't know how to do it. We don't we don't know how to replace our biggest franchises we have ever had. Okay, you know John Wick, of course, was came out Noah became pretty successful, and we haven't had a John Wick esque type movie where there was a where was a grassroots support for a movie, you know, movie franchise. You know, like Lionsgate messed up messed up. You know, it's messed up so poorly this year, okay? I don't think Ryan's Gate has had a successful movie released this year, okay? And it might be seen, like, no one ever talked about, but Ryan's Gate might be going under soon if they can't have a ha massive successful movie, okay? Ryan's Gate may go under, okay? The Hunger Games movie was successful, okay? I think that was the last successful movie, and then they released a bunch of minor movies, like, no one, that no one watched. Because again, non franchise movies don't make money these these days. They don't. You know, people don't watch movies that are not a part of a franchise, okay? But video game movies are going to be the next big thing, doesn't based on Mario's success. Okay? Borderlands movie could have been a decent success making three hundred and four million dollars globally. Okay. And but Ryan's Gate decided to screw it up, no surprise now. And now we're stuck with another box office failure on our hands. Yeah, but yeah, that's about Borderlands, and absolutely no one wants to see it. Not even the critics like it. Which again, no one gives about the critics, no one gives a crap of what they think, okay? This book about the game, the Mario movie, like, no one gives a crap of what they think. They said this book will be four, it's like a bad movie, and that movie made $700 million globally. It is one of the highest grossing movies of the year, which, you know, I get those two movies are quote unquote kids movies, but then explain how Why Godzilla did so well. Despite, you know, having a bad score on Rotten Tomatoes, the same score that they gave this figure me for. Despite that, people went to back Godzilla X Call actually broke records. Didn't break Godzilla 2014 records, but it did break records for Godzilla movie. Okay, it did break global records, which was very, very big for Godzilla movies going forward. Okay, it showed that the audience for Godzilla movies are still there. Okay. But seeing that with Borderlands, no one really cares all too much, okay? I haven't seen trailers for it, and the movie does look really, really bad, so I actually agree on the critics of this one. 
I don't, I I would rather sit out and never see this movie because they could have easily made it look like the games. They could have easily made it an animated movie where all the people we had to do was voice act the characters. Where it's it's much easier of a job than having live action characters. Or they could have used motion capture to create something like you know, like play, they do a play on this, but apes and making it animated like make it look like the games they can still have like actors acting and doing stunts but they can have it like a cgi world where they could, like could like have the apes where they have both the caps of characters but it seems that you know they would rather go to bo- the brand boy route and have it live action you know like it ruins the whole charm of borderlands okay the charm of borderlands is the art style of the game okay but it seems that they don't understand and get it Okay, the reason why Mario did so well and Sark did so well is because he understood. Okay, the creator, the creator of the Sark movie, he pulled back on that Sark trailer. He said, you know what? I'll give what the fans want. And guess what? The Sark movies are very successful. Mario movie, Miyamoto had to, no step did to make sure the Mario movie was acceptable for fans. Maybe the creators of Borderlands sort of stepped in to make sure Borderlands was acceptable. Same thing with One Piece. It seems that the creators who know the best, the universe the best, they didn't really contact the creators of the series to make sure the movie is done properly, like a Mario and Sonic. Or at least have listen to the fans and listen to fan feedback, you know. Or listen to, like, Sega. Have representatives, like, for example, Godzilla. The reason the Godzilla movies keep doing well is because Toho makes sure that they respect the rules of Godzilla. They have a Godzilla room. To make so that Hollywood and the creators of Godzilla minus one respect Godzilla, okay? Like the the, the Hollywood Godzilla movies, talk right about the MonsterVerse, they're supposed to be like basically like the old Godzilla movies, big. Well, the, well, the plot doesn't really matter all too much. It's really about big monster fight, big monster, okay? You know, that's basically the God the Godzilla movies and the nuts of the modern Godzilla movies, okay? And of course, people love those. Okay, people love those movies, and they, and that's because they give what they know. That's what they expect out of a Godzilla movie. Okay, and Godzilla minus one, Godzilla twenty fourteen are much different. They're more about the human characters. I think that's why the critics like those movies way more because they're not, you know, not they're not quote unquote monster fight swap fests, is what they say. But yeah, that's about this video here, and goodbye.